Hey kids, this story is about how Abraham found a wife for his son Isaac. It is clear that God was directing him to the right one. Now Abraham was old and advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in every way. And Abraham said to his servant, who had charge of all that he owned, Please swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live. But you will go to my country and to my relatives and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, Suppose the woman is not willing to follow me to this land. Should I take your son back to the land from where you came? Then Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back there. The Lord took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth and said, To your descendants I will give this land. So you will take a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you shall be free from this my oath. Only do not take my son back there. Then the servant took ten camels from the camels of his master, and he set out with a variety of good things of his master's in his hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the city of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show loving kindness to my master Abraham. Now may it be that the girl to whom I say, please let down your jar so that I may drink, and who answers, drink, and I will water your camels also. May she be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I shall know that you have shown loving kindness to my master. Before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. The girl was very beautiful, and she went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she said, Drink, my lord, and she quickly lowered her jar to her hand and gave him a drink. Now when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw also for your camels until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. Meanwhile, the man was gazing at her in silence to know whether the lord had made his journey successful or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring and two bracelets for her wrists and said, Whose daughter are you? She said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. We have plenty of both straw and feed and room to lodge in. Then the man said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has guided me in the way to the house of my master's brothers. Then the girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebekah had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran outside to the man at the spring. And when he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, he went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. And he said, Come in, blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside, since I have prepared the house and a place for the camels? So the man entered the house, but when food was set before him to eat, he said, I will not eat until I have told you my business. And he said, Speak on. So the man said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master, so that he has become rich. 
Now Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master in her old age, and he has given him all that he has. And my master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house and to my relatives and take a wife for my son. So I came today to the spring, and Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. Then I asked her and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. And I bowed low and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has guided me in the right way to take the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. So now, if you are going to deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. And if not, let me know that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, The matter comes from the Lord, so we cannot speak to you good or bad. Here is Rebekah before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has spoken. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he brought out articles of silver and articles of gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night. And when they arose in the morning, he said, Send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, we will call the girl and consult her wishes. So they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. Thus they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. Then Rebekah arose with her maids, and they mounted the camels and followed the man. So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Now Isaac was living in the Negev, and he went out to meditate in the field towards evening, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel and said to the servant, Who is that man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, He is my master. Then she took her veil and covered herself. The servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into her mother Sarah's tent, and he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. Thus Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Well, kids, do you see how carefully God leads us in the important decisions that we have to make in life?